Hi, this is Eric Elder, and welcome to this uh, live broadcast from the ranch. It is a uh, Sunday, May 9th, and it's about 8 o'clock here in Illinois. And uh, I'm glad that you're here with us, whether you're live or if you're watching us later. Um, I believe that God has something that he can speak to you as well. And uh, I just pray that God would give you uh, many encouragements through our time that we share here. I'd like to start with a song, uh, and it's called I Stand in Awe. And it's just about standing in awe of God. And if you uh, know it, you can sing along with it, or you can just uh, enjoy the song. Um, and then I'd like to talk a little about a, a message I sent out today in our uh, devotional about Israel. And we're talking about the city of Nazareth and uh, what that city meant in the Bible and what it means to you today and how God can uh, use kings and governments and family and friends and even enemies to move us into the place where he wants us to be. Sometimes it seems uh, rather random about how God moves people around, but as you'll see from the story about the city of Nazareth, God has some very specific places that he needs you to go to, that he wants you to be, that he uh, has in mind for you. And sometimes he uses these other things and circumstances in our life to push and pull us into the place that we need to be. And it feels sometimes like uh, it's others who are doing it to us when God is actually the one uh, that's bringing it all about. So I'd like to encourage you a little bit that no matter what God uh, might be doing in your life uh, and how random it might seem, God can work all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And that includes you today. And so I want you to be encouraged that God has some things that he wants you to do, and he has places where he wants you to be. And I'm going to share a few stories from my own life, too, and even things going on right now uh, where uh, God is working in our life uh, to get us to the place where he wants us to be. So I'm glad you're here. But let's start with just a worship song, uh, I Stand in Awe of You. This is in the key of G, if you're uh, playing along. You are beautiful beyond description.
Thank you, Lord, for letting us be here, and I pray, God, that you would speak to each one of us, you would speak to our hearts, and you would encourage us in our faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, I'm glad you're here. My name is Eric Elder, and we're broadcasting live from Clover Ranch here in Illinois, and uh, we're talking tonight about the city of Nazareth, and I don't know if you know, but Israel is actually a very small country. Nazareth is situated about 20 miles from the Mediterranean Sea on one side and about 15 miles from the Sea of Galilee on the other. So the Mediterranean and the Sea of Galilee uh, are the outside borders of Israel currently, and uh, that's uh, about 35 miles across, and Nazareth is right in the middle of it. So it's not very far, 30, 35 miles um, from one side to the other. The whole country uh, gets wider at some points and back to narrow at other points, but uh, it's not a very big place. Uh, you can travel uh, from one end to the other uh, within a day and uh, back and forth across it, uh, even walking that 35 miles. Uh, it wouldn't take you a, a huge amount of time to get across. So um, when we're talking about the city of Nazareth, it's about uh, 70 miles from Jerusalem. So Jerusalem's down south uh, from Nazareth, about 70 miles. Um, so that's uh, sort of the geography of what's going on in Nazareth. But uh, when we were there last fall, we were able to go to a Nazareth village. It was a recreation of uh, what it might have been back, like back in Jesus' time. and It was just a great place to see and to hear and to learn about some of the things that went on in uh, Nazareth in those days. And they had a, like a yoke that would be on an oxen and a plow and uh, just sort of talked about the plow and how when you put your hand to the plow, you can't look back because if you look back, then... Uh, your plow row is going to go quite crooked, and as you look at this very long, thin plow, you could see that uh, just a small deviation at the beginning of your field would be a huge deviation at the end of the field. And uh, So there are just a lot of biblical examples of uh, things that uh, you know you keep your head straight and focused uh, on the goal and the prize and things like that. So there are just a lot of things you can learn just by being in the land of Israel and just seeing uh, what it was like back in Bible times. Uh, but the thing that fascinated me about this uh, story of Nazareth is that the Bible talked about how nothing good uh, could come from Nazareth. Uh, Nathaniel was one of the followers of Jesus, but before he uh, put his faith in Christ, he uh, actually made that statement, and Philip told him that uh, there was this man from Nazareth uh, who was quite amazing, and Nathaniel replied, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Well, of course, we all know that Jesus actually came from there, and uh, he is uh, the ultimate good, and he was there with God at the creation of the world when God created the world, and on each day God said that it was good. And uh, so there's not really any place in the world that is not declared good by God. And maybe that's even encouraging to you, that you might feel like you're out in Podunk. I have no idea where you, where you might live, and uh, we, we're out here in the middle of the country, uh, in the middle of Illinois, in the middle of the United States, and uh, it's not necessarily on the way to or from anything, um, but God has declared it all good. He has a reason and a plan for uh, all the places uh, that we live. In fact, there's a great verse in the book of Acts that talks about God having a plan, and if you've heard me talk before, you've heard me mention this verse, but uh, it's just such a powerful verse from Acts 17, 26. It says, from one man, uh, he, God, made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. So God's not far from any one of us, and he's actually determined the exact times and the places uh, where we will live. And uh, I don't really know how that all plays out uh, in our free will and uh, all of those things, but I know that we can trust that God uh, has a reason for every place on earth, and he has a reason for putting people in the places that he's put them, and he has a reason for the place that he's put you and where he's put me too. And uh, I have uh, just encouragement from the story about Jesus that God used the kings and the governments at that time to get Jesus to the places where he wanted him. If you've uh, read the devotional for today, you'll see, then you'll remember that Jesus, uh, actually his parents, Mary and Joseph, were from Nazareth, the city uh, in Israel, but they were called to Bethlehem at the time of Jesus' birth. And when they were called, it was because the king or the emperor back in Rome 
had decreed that there should be a census taken throughout the land. They were going to count all the people and that everyone was to return to the place where their forefathers were from. And so Joseph was from the line of David. So that meant he had to go back to the city of Bethlehem because David was from Bethlehem. So Mary and Joseph traveled back to Bethlehem. And I'm sure it wasn't an easy trip for them and uh, just having to get there on a donkey and all. Um, during Mary's ninth month of pregnancy, uh, I'm sure it was a little uncomfortable, and I'm not sure if Mary felt quite blessed, as God had said that she would be called blessed among all women. Um, and yet uh, that's what God did, because he had a reason for the Son of God to be born in Bethlehem. There was an Old Testament prophecy uh, that it was uh, in Bethlehem, though it was small among the tribes of Judah, that uh, out of Bethlehem would come this uh, deliverer of the people. And uh, that's exactly where Jesus was born. But then King Herod wanted to kill all the young boys of Bethlehem uh, because he found out from the wise men who had traveled there that the Messiah was going to be born. So he asked the Jews, the chief priests, uh, and the teachers of the law, where was this Messiah to be born? And they said in Bethlehem. And so uh, he had all the young boys uh, under uh, the age of two be killed. And he uh, was going on this killing spree and uh, that, again, fulfilled some prophecies from the Old Testament, from Jeremiah, talking about uh, the weeping and wailing that would go on uh, from uh, the people in Bethlehem. But uh, Jesus was spared from that because Mary and Joseph were warned to flee from Herod and his wrath. So they went to Egypt, which seemed probably random and uh, strange and foreign to them, having a young family and having to go to this other country because this crazy king is trying to kill all the young boys in your city. Uh, and especially your young boy, because he was the promised Messiah. And yet uh, that fulfilled another prophecy from the Old Testament that said, out of Egypt I called my son. And that's where uh, the Son of God was called from as well. And then they returned to uh, Israel after Herod was uh, killed, and he had died. And uh, so this was some time later that they returned back to Israel, and they didn't want to go back to uh, Judea or to Bethlehem because there was another king there who was uh, doing some evil things as well. So they went back to Nazareth, the hometown of Mary and Joseph, and that fulfilled yet another prophecy of Scripture, saying that he would be called a Nazarene. And so he was born in Bethlehem, he was called out of Egypt, he was called a Nazarene, and uh, as you look through the Scriptures, you might have wondered, how can all that take place, and how could he come from all these different places? And yet, when you see as the story played out, exactly how that worked, and it wasn't quite as strange as it might have sounded, uh, and yet it was necessary to fulfill all the prophecies. And whether God had known beforehand that, uh, you know, if, if he destined this and he said, I want him to do all these things in order to fulfill these prophecies, or whether he just knew what was going to happen in the hearts of men and how they would choose to move and act throughout society, uh, I don't really know how God does it. As the song said today, um, he is a wonderful too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing we've ever seen or heard. Who can grasp his infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of his love? So I don't really know how that all works out, but I know that God can make things work out in the way that uh, is fulfilling his prophecy. And uh, I hope that encourages you today that you might feel like you're being pushed around by uh, maybe governments uh, that are doing things that uh, you might not agree with or uh, people that you don't agree with, maybe your enemies, maybe your friends, maybe your family. Um, just in our own situation, we've recently moved down to Clover Ranch, and this has uh, been a desire of ours to have a place uh, out in the country where we can minister to people. We've uh, wanted to do this for many years, uh, but through a situation and circumstances that were going on in our own life, and our own families, um, it turned out that this was the time that God uh, wanted us to move here. And uh, even though walking through that, we were sort of puzzled and wondering, is this really God? Is this really time? Uh, what did he want us to do? Because it seemed like uh, we were making plans to go in another direction, and yet God was making plans for us to come here. And uh, sometimes the tension between those two things can be very uh, strong, because you want to do what God wants, and sometimes you plan your steps, and you say, okay, God, I feel like this is where you want me to be and what you want me to do. And then the rug sort of gets pulled out from under you, and you find yourself in another place, and yet when you look at it, you say, well, this is exactly the place that God wanted me in the first place anyway. So uh, it can sometimes be really uh, 
difficult or confusing just to walk through and say, God, are you really in this? Is this what you want? But I think as long as we acknowledge God, as long as we trust in him, as the Pro book of Proverbs says, you know, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight, then God can work things out for his good and for our good and for the fulfillment of his will here on earth. There was another thought that struck me as I was going through these uh, passages and just thinking about Mary being a blessed woman. And that's just how God has designed each of us in a special way for a special calling and purpose. And I wrote about this back in a, uh, about 10 years ago in a book called Two Weeks with God. It's sort of a short devotional uh, based on some songs that I wrote. And this was a song that I wrote called Blessed Are You. And I'd just like to read this to you. Uh, just because it talks about how Mary was so blessed by God uh, for this very special purpose and calling. And yet uh, he didn't call everyone to give birth to his son. Uh, he called Mary for that very specific purpose. And uh, he didn't uh, call everyone to lead the Egyptians out of the Red Sea. He called Moses to do that. He didn't call everyone to preach back in the first century to the Gentiles uh, specifically. Um, and that's why he sent Paul on his missionary journeys to take the gospel throughout all those countries surrounding Israel. Um, so God had uh, people in mind that he wanted to do these specific uh, tasks. And uh, I'm just going to jump ahead here uh, just to talk about how uh, God does this. Uh, it says that uh, all the people in the Bible were men and women just like us. And he created each of us for a unique purpose as well. We really are special. We're not cookie-cutter men and women made out of gingerbread. Our fingerprints are unique, our voices are unique, our eyes are unique, and God's plans for us are unique. Paul reminds us that we all have a role to play, just like the body needs various parts to function well. Some of us are eyes, some are ears, and some are hands or feet. 1 Corinthians 12 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Jeremiah 29.11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I wonder if maybe you're like uh, Queen Esther and God has put you in a place uh, for such a time as this. She was the wife of the king and the king was going to exterminate all the Jews and she was herself a Jew, but he didn't know that. And she happened to rise to power and be in the place where she could actually do something about the situation. And she uh, sort of made her stand, and she said, if I die, I die, but I've got to do this on behalf of my people. And she approached the king, and she uh, asked him to call off or to uh, adjust the law in such a way that the Jews could defend themselves, and uh, they were saved as a result of her standing and uh, her being willing to put her life on the line for what she was called to do. Not everyone's called to be Esther. Not everyone's married to a king uh, in a country where they're making laws about Jews being exterminated. But God is calling you to a specific purpose, just like Paul, just like Moses, just like Esther, just like Mary was called for a specific purpose. And even more importantly, God uh, can equip you and can help you through that special purpose. Not everyone would probably trade places with Mary, uh, even though some people might want to be called most blessed among women. Um, this is Mother's Day here in the United States, and uh, uh, so many women are blessed uh, who've been able to have children, and yet not everyone would want to trade places with Mary. Just the things that she had to go through, from the uh, unusual birth and not having even any place uh, to give birth and having to give birth out in an animal stable, uh, to having to watch her son die a horrible crucifixion death. And uh, so she had to go through some very unique struggles in her life, but God equipped her for those unique struggles. Not everyone would want to be Paul and uh, sailing and shipwrecked and uh, travel through the Mediterranean and be in danger of uh, bandits and take care of uh, dozens of churches and all the things that he had to do. Uh, but God equipped him and God blessed him for that purpose. God has equipped you and blessed you for a specific purpose as well. And he has a plan for you. And he has brought you to a place for a reason. And I just want to encourage you tonight just to continue to seek God for what that reason is, what that plan is, and how you can make the most of wherever you are in the world.
God really does love you. He really does care for you. He really does have a plan for you. It might sound trite, but only because it's been repeated so many times, and it's only been repeated so many times because it's so very true, and it's straight from the Bible. Just like I read in Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Let God's unique plans for you sink deep into your soul. This is my message tonight. Just uh, let God uh, speak to you about the plans that he has for your life. And also just to trust him and to continue to follow his plan wherever it might lead. You might need to stand strong and stay right where you are because God has called you to be there and he doesn't want anything to move you. And you may face opposition, but God wants you to stay there. On the other hand, God may want you to go. He may want you to move. He may want you to move across town or move across the world. God knows and he has a plan and he wants you to fulfill that plan. In fact, he wants you to fulfill it even more than you do. And so if you'll continue asking him, he would love to answer you and help you to know what that plan is. I'd like to sing another worship song here for you and uh, just let you uh, sit in God's presence. Actually, I'm just going to play it, I think, and uh, just let uh, God speak to you and just let his plan sink deep into your heart. Just continue to trust him and let him guide you. And uh, we'll come back after I play, and uh, I'd like to say a prayer for you. If you'd like to join me in the chat room uh, after the song as well, uh, you can join, you can log in the chat room right now if you'd like, and uh, just at the bottom of your screen, you can click on the uh, little link that right next to the button that says Say, and just type in whatever you want to say and push the word Say, and it'll ask you for a nickname. You'll just need to enter some kind of nickname. It doesn't have to be your real name. Um, and then it will post that message to the chat room, and I'd be glad to pray with you personally as well today. So just let God's uh, spirit flow over you right now as I play this song again. I stand in awe of you. <laughs> say a prayer for you. God, I thank you for those who have gathered here tonight or who are watching later. God, I just pray that you would speak to their hearts clearly and directly, confirming what you've called them to do and where you've called them to be. Lord, I pray even for our own family that you would confirm in our hearts, as you have been doing over the last several weeks, that this is right where you want us that none of this is a surprise to you, and that you have a plan for us. And Lord, let us just rejoice in that plan. Lord, thank you for accelerating things in our own life in these last few months, Lord. I pray that you would accelerate things in others' lives as well, that you would bring them to the place where they know that they know that they know that you have brought them where they are for a very specific reason and purpose. Lord, it may be multiple purposes on many fronts, Lord, whether it's to reach out to family or co-workers or uh, unbelievers or believers. Lord, whether it's to use their gifts and skills, whether it's a medical doctor uh, performing surgery, Lord, or whether it's a secretary uh, helping out some people at the office, or whether it's 
uh, someone who loves music and is using their gift of music to bless and encourage others. Lord, whatever it is that's going on in their life, I pray that you would encourage them and encourage them in their gifts and their talents so that they would know that they are doing exactly what you've called them to do. Lord, I pray for those who really don't know you and really don't understand and really aren't sure if you're there even, Lord. Help them know that you are very present, that you are not far from each one of us, as you say in the book of Acts, that you are right there and you hope that we will reach out for you and seek you and find you, for that is uh, just such an essential and primary reason for all that you've done for us, Lord, to have a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that they would know that you are so close that they could reach out and touch you, even right now. And Lord, I pray that you would touch them in return. I pray that you would hold their hand. I pray that you would speak to them, guide them, comfort their hearts, give them the wisdom they need and the peace that they need to carry out your will in the world. We pray this all in Jesus' strength, name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for coming. And if you have uh, something specific, I'm going to play a little bit more on the piano. I'll play a Keith Green song, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. And uh, if you would like to just uh, listen to the song, that's fine. But if you'd like to uh, enter something in the chat room, we'll be around for a little bit. And uh, you can just uh, post your comments in the chat room. I'd be glad to pray personally with you as well about uh, anything that's going on in your life. Thanks again for coming. All right, thanks for coming. I'm going to uh, continue on uh, just in the chat room here with the people who have joined us and uh, join us again next week.